Section 1-4, Absolute Value. In this video, you will learn how to evaluate expressions containing absolute value bars and solve equations containing absolute value. You should take notes on your own and write the examples and vocabulary that you think are important. Absolute value is the number's distance from zero on a number line. These bars indicate absolute value. The absolute value of negative 4 is 4 because negative 4 is 4 units away from 0. The absolute value of 4 is also 4 because positive 4 is 4 units away from 0. Distance and absolute value are always positive. When we evaluate an expression with absolute value bars, we treat the absolute value like parentheses. So we will simplify everything inside of our absolute value bars and then take the positive value of this and continue to simplify. In this case, we're told that x equals negative 1, so I'll start by substituting that in. Now that I've simplified everything inside my absolute value, I have the absolute value of negative 1, which I know is 1 because negative 1 is 1 unit away from 0. So I have 1 minus 5 over 2, which gives me negative 3 over 2. Students often think that the answer to an absolute value problem has to be positive, but notice that our answer is negative 3 over 2. All we know is that whatever is inside of these bars is positive. Before we look at the steps for solving, let's think about what each of these is actually asking. The first one here says the absolute value of x is 3. That means what number or numbers is 3 units away from 0? So if I have 0 here, then I know that I could either move 3 units to the right or 3 units to the left. So my solutions are 3 and negative 3. I wrote the plus minus symbol. You can also write it as 3 comma negative 3. And I wrote it in brackets because that's my solution set. The second one says x plus 1 equals 3. This means what number increased by 1 is 3 units from 0. I could think of this as x minus negative 1 equals 3. In other words, when I shift the whole thing down by 1, because I'm going to increase by 1, then I can look at 3 units to the right and 3 units to the left. So my solutions here are negative 4 and positive 2. And we could always check that. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. The absolute value of that is 3. And then 2 plus 1 is 3. The absolute value of that is also 3. The next one says 2 times some number is 3 units away from 0. So again, I could have the positive or negative value, but I know that I want 2 times 3 over 2 in order to give me 3, and I could have that be positive or negative, because I don't care if I get positive or negative since we're taking the absolute value. Then we have the absolute value of x is negative 3. That's saying what number is negative 3 units away from 0. That's impossible, so we write no solution or this symbol right here. And finally, the absolute value of x minus 1 equals 0. That's saying what number minus 1 is 0 units away from 0. The only number that that works for is positive 1, because when we subtract 1, then we get the absolute value of 0. So in this case, we only have one solution, and that is 1. Notice that some of our cases had two solutions, some had no solutions, and this one had one solution. Now let's look at some step-by-step -step examples. We want to solve this equation. Our steps are that we first isolate the entire absolute value, then we split into the cases where the absolute value equals whatever we have on the other side, and our second case, where the absolute value equals the negative version of whatever we have on the other side. This is because we know that once we take the absolute value, our distance will be positive. When we solve each of these two cases, we then need to check our solutions because there could be extraneous solutions, meaning a solution that does not work. Have the absolute value of 3c minus 2 equals 6. That means 3 times some number decreased by 2 is 6 units away from 0. So we have two cases, either 3c minus 2 equals 6 or 3c minus 2 equals negative 6. These will both work because when we take the absolute value, we know that we will end up getting a positive distance. So I'll solve these each separately. And I get my two solutions. 
c is either 8 over 3 or c is negative 4 over 3. Now, before I write this as my final answer, I should check both of these in my original equation. Both of these are solutions because on the first one, I get 6 minus 4 equals 2, which is true. And in the second one, I have the absolute value of negative 6, which I know is positive 6, minus 4 equals 2. We'll do another few examples. In this next one, my first step is to isolate the absolute value bar. So I get negative 4 times 2n minus 7 equals 16. And when I divide by the number on the outside, just as if this was parentheses, I have that my entire absolute value equals negative 4. Right away, I know that I cannot have a distance that's negative, and therefore, this is no solution. In the next example, I need to split this into two cases. One, where we have a equals b, which means I have oops, 8 plus y equals 2y minus 3. And the other one, where I have a equals negative b. That means my left side stays the same, but my right side, I take the opposite of every term. In other words, I switch the sign on everything. And now I'll solve each of these. I get the solutions y equals 11 and y equals negative 5 over 3. But I, of course, need to check each of these. When we check each of our solutions, we realize that while our first equation is true, our second one is not. We have 19 over 3 equals negative 19 over 3. This means that this is called an extraneous solution, so it does not actually work. Therefore, our solution is just y equals 11. Now you should be able to evaluate expressions containing absolute value by substituting in the value, simplifying what's in the absolute value bars, and then taking the positive value of that because it's the distance from zero, and then continuing to simplify. And you should be able to solve equations containing absolute values by first isolating the portion with the absolute value, then splitting it into the two cases where a equals b and a equals negative b. So we take the opposites of every term on one side of our equation. Then when we solve each of them, we need to substitute our solutions back in to check and make sure that they do all in fact work. We know that sometimes we may have two solutions, sometimes no solutions, and sometimes one solution. If you'd like to see one more example done, continue watching. If not, have a wonderful day. I'll do this final example out with you. The first thing I need to do is isolate my absolute value bars. So I'll do that by subtracting 2 from both sides and then dividing the whole thing by my coefficient of negative 3. So I have the absolute value of v minus 5 equals 5 thirds. Now I need to make my two cases. So either v minus 5 equals 5 thirds or v minus 5 equals negative 5 thirds. When I make a common denominator, I get that I either get 20 thirds or I get v equals 10 thirds. And now I need to check each of those solutions back in my original problem. In this example, both of my solutions worked. So my answers are 20 over 3 and 10 over 3. Notice that because of the absolute value, my 5 over 3 and my negative 5 over 3 that were in the absolute value bars both came out to a positive, and therefore both of those equations worked. Whoops, this should have said example 5 up top right here.